Do you pay attention to the elderly around you, or do you simply look right through them? People would say, but wait, she's over 50. What, 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 she, what she want parliament? What does she want to go into parliament for? But that is just the beginning of life. Long ago in the early 70s, when Errol Bauer was there, it was given a grand piano by the British High Commission. Mm -hmm. And Errol knew I could play, and I, Errol said, Maisie, you have to play the very first thing. And I remember I was so scared. <laughs> Barbados does have uh, one of the oldest populations in the Caribbean, and we do also do have one of the highest proportion of centenarians worldwide, as a matter of fact. And um, we can attribute this uh, one to our healthcare system, in that you know, in Barbados, healthcare is accessible to all. I mean, free at the point of delivery. I'm not saying it's free, but um, you know, there's no payment requirement. There's no payment required for anyone in Barbados and a Barbadian to access health care. And that helps and has, I believe, played a significant role in uh, improving the longevity of Barbadians. At the age of 101, Melville Williams is a master saddler, making various articles for horses and practicing his leather craft with the same precision as when he first started at age 15. He learned it all from his father, who he says was the best in the business. Right there, come here. This is the big job I make to know that the man is an able man. That. Being my father at the plantation, <clears throat> I had so much to do. He didn't have the time to, to work for the poor man. Well, horse cart, donkey cart, they had plenty of that. And he was sending the men here on Saturday morning to do work for the poor people. You have me? He don't be here neither because he going to look for work for, for, for them from Monday morning and the planting they had to go to. So he ain't had time on Saturdays. So the workmen come here. This is work like that. Put it on like that. You can you, you get this a grit. So this, this, this is forward. This it, be here. Come down the forward. See how it's in there, sure? And then they bit him out. So you can't kind of see. What I did then is to continue with my father till he retire. So when he retired, I had to work. I had I was a boy. So the, so the the the, the, the big, people like me a lot, they said that they, they never see a boy work like that, like me. And um he tell me little William. When I pay, you don't go to no room, shop and drink no room, you know, go to, go to church. Saddling was by no means the only skill that Mr. Williams mastered. I go over this place and I butcher. Because I have a lot of people in, in, the, in the yards, the, the ladies want meat, goat, sheep, pigs, and all that. So I go over this place and I run that for about eight years. And all that time I had the money to send her to school. Then when I, when I was, um, before I leave, then I had a shop just above here, the house above here was a shop. And my, but my cousin's shop, his father and mother died and leave him, he, he was in Billy Lake. He couldn't, couldn't go to school. But he, he and I was, was such a great buddy. My father was living here, and I had a, a shop. My house was in front here, to, to the roadside. 
Urawood Tuberung. It tell me Mel sell that house and come and live in his house and take it over. And he had land here, land below here, land in the rim, land in Rock Dunder, and I, I do all that work. I was a boss from early morning. Successful aging, such as reaching the milestone of three score and ten years and beyond, is in itself an achievement. However, there are falsehoods surrounding the aging process that are still in existence. There are so many myths about them. For instance, they say all the persons aren't interested in sex. There's no proof about that. They say all the persons don't like to have fun. But, but that, that, is not, that is not true, you know? And um, they feel, some people feel that there's a way you should behave when you're old. <laughs> that you should get away from little fun things and so on. But um, I, don't, I don't feel that way at all. In fact, how does one feel when one is old? I don't know. <laughs> it, you know, it, it has the curtain of me um, because I do think I do crossword puzzles, a lot of crossword puzzles and anagrams and so on, and I play and I go in my garden. And <laughs> this spinach is so good. Uh, Mint. Yeah. This is garlic chive. Look at that. It's called black pearl. And look, if you look here, you'll see why it's called black pearl. Yeah, it looks like a, a black pearl in tree. Yeah. yeah. The myth is that when you get a certain age, you stay back and let people, other people do things. But no, you are to keep on. You should keep on and on. There's nothing to prevent a whole lot of people living to 120. So I have been assured by medical research. <laughs> Barbados boasts the oldest man in the entire region. He is 111-year-old James Emmanuel Sisnet. Walking was a daily activity for Mr. Sisnet, who journeyed to and from work by foot. You just got to walk for the toes of the foot I walk back. The thing with Dungy and Cat was uh, more important than the more, more the cat knew. In an aging society such as ours, where persons aged 60 represent 15.58% of the populace and 65 year olds and over embody 12%, the provision of optimal care for elders has become imperative. Caregivers have to be to see older persons that they're caring for as individuals and not just passive re, um, recipients of care. They can be involved in their care. You must recognize that there are individuals who have worth, who have dignity, who have rights, and therefore are deserving of a service and quality of life and respect. Older persons are often misunderstood. This is why it is important to be aware of the mental changes they sometimes go through. Dementias are become more common as people age. Now, how best, the best uh, way to go about dealing with a situation like this is the first thing that should be done is that that older person should have a, a medical assessment done because as I said, it could be dementia or it could be delirium. Uh, delirium is, is, is an acute confusional state, meaning that the person becomes confused um, over a relatively short period of time. And um, dementia is more of a, a confusional state that, that occurs over time, like months, years. And um, the difference is that quite often in delirium, if you can um, identify the cause, you know, quite often that can be treated and the person could probably, most often will return to close, if not um, the same level of function that they were at before 
you know, the, the illness occurred. Very often because of the impairment and the short-term memory, memory loss, they're very often not aware. So you may have just fed them, but they will say that they haven't had been, um, have food for a very, very long time. And for them, it is very, very real. But our role is not to argue, but to bring some sort of understanding and some sort of empathy in dealing with these persons and to see them as a human being, individuals. My own concept of it is that people need to adjust to the changes that are happening in their lives. First, to recognize them, because you hear the, the comment that once a man, twice a child, and this is true. Sometimes you find yourself trying to button something, you can't get the button, just like a child. And certainly some older people, you find the, the loss of memory is an extreme thing. Alzheimer's, I remember an elderly aunt, 80, 80 or 90 years old even, to remember where the bathroom was, or to open a, a gate in the house, you know, you're pushing rather than pulling, or can't find things, you know, this, you're feeling it's under the bed, although there's nothing under there. That person may have placed whatever item, money, whatever, in a particular place and not remember where they've put it. And if, um, you know, if you have something of value and you can't find it, you know, you fear that it's stolen. So then, you know, the accusations would then uh, come into play. Now, someone like that, again, the medical evaluation would most likely show that, um, would most likely help to confirm I should say confirm that this is a dementia and then there are things that can be put in place to to deal with that that situation and the things that will be put in place would be like um, if we have what we call non-pharmacological measures and pharmacological measures and the non-pharmacological measures would be things like trying to maintain a familiar friendly um, environment and um, you know, structuring activities or structuring the, the activities that that person would do throughout the day. You know, try to do the same thing every day and so that they become familiar and comfortable doing these things during the day. And of course, um, you know, um, doing things to try to maintain, um, keep the brain active, okay? And keeping that person engaged and, and involved in activities, um, everyday activities as as per normal okay you're not dealing with a normal individual but you should try to try to keep things as normal as possible and it would also be important to make sure that that person is supervised at all times and um, I mean then of course there are medications that can be used to help in treating this disorder there are medications that are used to actually treat the dementia and then there are also medications that are used to um, help with the, 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 the difficult behaviors that are associated with dementia. Things like not sleeping at night and hence wandering around and hence the person who's looking after them also can't sleep. Sleep aids can be used. Uh, then, of course, if they're aggressive and, or, uh, or, or uh, foul mouth, for want of a better word, um, again, if they're having delusions or, or you know, which are, which are, which will be false beliefs, or if they're seeing things that are not there, there are medications that can be used again to help to, to um, deal with that uh, situation. As the population of elderly persons increases, so does the demand to meet their basic needs. The, the elderly population is very diverse and have diverse needs, but regard, regardless of their needs or their socioeconomic status, I would say that the basic needs for elderly persons is for the good quality of life and well-being. And that may mean different things for different persons depending on their status. So for example, in the community, um, housing, housing is a very big challenge for some of our older persons. A lot of our housing stock is inadequate and very poor and substandard and somehow it limits the level of service which elderly persons can access. In terms even where housing may be adequate in terms of the infrastructure, um, as the persons 
age and they have impairments, say am amputees, a simple thing like a ramp in terms of accessibility. Very often you may have persons who are may have, may have an amputation and would have been discharged from the hospital but mm -hmm. as unable to go home because they're using the wheelchair now and they cannot access the the house because there is no ramp. Simple things like um, in terms of the waterborne toilet facilities, some of our elderly persons still have outdoor facilities. So that, that creates a challenge for their personal care and their um, hygiene within the home. There's simple things you can, you can do, even something as simple as a, a, um, raising a toilet seat as they lose their mobility and their flexibility and bone tissue. They will need some level of, some assistive devices within the home, even other needs, particularly Healthcare. Now, healthcare services are provided in the community at the polyclinics and at the hospital, free at the point of service of delivery. But the issue is accessibility. If you do not have the transportation to to get there, if you do not have someone to accompany accompany you, for, particularly for elderly persons who do not have a very supportive network, in terms of medication accessing medication, the monitoring and supervising of medication within the home. Suppose medication um, change and obviously some elderly persons because of the impairments and the cognitive deficiencies um, are not able to cope with the changes in medication, understanding that at one point where the dosage may be high, say 60 milligrams, I'm taking half of half of a tablet, but when it's 30, I may just take one. These are the kind of issues which affect um, elderly persons and affect their, their needs. The fact is that we are living longer. This means preparing for healthy aging has become even more necessary. To achieve this, one must have a positive attitude towards life and develop a good social network. It has to start from early, you know. You have to start thinking about your body, thinking about your, not only your pension, what are you going to do afterwards, you know. Some people think that they're going to be young forever. But you have to, from the time you are young, you have to start preparing for being old and like, getting your pension plans, knowing exactly what you can expect when you get old. And another thing you have to do is to keep exercising. Keep moving, keep your brain working, you know, and intermingle with younger people. I think that is a wonderful thing. Just as the aging process is a natural transition in the life cycle, so too is preparing for what is referred to as the beginning of the last third of one's life, and that is retirement. Early retirement shouldn't mean early letting go because if you retire I know some people retire at 60 and 60 and they have a flourish of business or something else after that and um, here am I and wh wh why couldn't I start up a little business or something like that so and um, you know because retirement Nowadays, especially in this world, as the economists and all those people who really know about it say, nobody does the same job their whole life, which, which is very interesting. And, and I have a cousin who is retired, and she's going to set up a florist, you know, set up a business. So I, I don't know. I, I, I really uh, don't have a, a sound opinion on that, but it, uh, it is because there are some people who can work, some people who can work the same job till they're 80 or whatever, they work the same job on God's, but there are others who are glad for the retirement to branch into something that they had always wanted. Elderly persons acquire a wealth of knowledge and experience in their lifetimes. Because of this, they are able to compare the norms of yesteryear to present-day standards. I'm 72, was 72 on the 2nd of September, 
this year. So all the September borns, the Virgos um, should feel happy about that. I grew up in Greenwich Village in St. James, and I had a, a very wonderful time in terms of catching birds, fish. As we said, anything that moved you would catch. What we call here rabbits with the dogs. I had a very, very good upbringing. But all along, education was stress. Your parents, my parents were poor. Uh, mother working on the plantation, father, fishman, uh, and you could catch, get fish to catch, you know, not resident in the home and so on. But there was a very strong, um, you know, advice from the mother and the whole community that you have to get an education. I think that has changed a lot now. People don't seem to put that value because there's so many other things you can do. A lot of people are pushing drugs in the sea to get more money that way than education. But we knew that you had to be educated to get out of that, that business of poverty. So when you hear people talking about the body is poor so they can't do anything else but sell the body or do nonsense, I really, that gets me upset. Because if you're really committed to yourself and to life, then you know you have to do things that are honest and good. My father had 12 children. And I've never heard him beg or beseech a politician or expect a politician to look after his family. Nowadays, everybody, a lot of people think that because you're a politician and your nail hurts, you go on to the politician. I think that that is ridiculous. People ought to learn to stand on their own two feet, help others when they can. But I'm saying this dependence, we are raising a set of dependent people, you know? And um, I am very happy that people are encouraging young people to be entrepreneurs and so on because we cannot divorce ourselves from world politics. And there is no way that a country in this scene is going to be able to find jobs for everybody. And so I think that it's a good thing to help to ask kids to, you know, to... And you know, lifestyle. People will tell you that they are starving, and yet they have a telephone, a cell phone, and so on. Now, if you I, we begin to talk about that, you don't want them to, you don't want them to get the same thing as you. But the thing is, if you have a child hungry, which you rather look after, that child hungry, or telephone, or cell phone, or all sorts of things. So also, we in Barbados are not very good consumers, I must say. We take what is offered there. We don't stand up and say we are not buying it. In America, something happened with coffee one time and the housewives decided we are not buying it. So what happened? Had to do something about it. But in Barbados, we say, oh, I can't eat the money. And that, and <laughs> you see, that is it. People, people buy things that they, they, that they want, not so much what they need. And so we are raising up a group of young people <coughs> who want, 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 want. And their parents try the best to give them the brand name shoes and the brand name this, fill the young girls here with all sorts of stupid boys and everything when they could get a glass of milk for the child. So I think that we, we, I think we have to change our lifestyle. The secret to longevity lies in the pursuit of an active and a gratifying lifestyle. Longevity? 83 is longevity, yeah. let me see. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's just that I don't even think. I don't even think about it. I mean, just that everybody say have a bucket now and then and so on. But you see, I have never let it. I can have a back, the worst bucket and do whatever I have to do. You know, I wouldn't lie, I wouldn't lie down. I would, I would, I would perceive what they have to do. So my mother and father, they, 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 I won't call them that long. Daddy was 89 and my mother was 92. Yeah, I carry my mother here, tiny I, I don't know. And 
I must say that I do eat a lot of those things that the old people talk about. Sometimes for breakfast I have yam, or potato, or green banana, or cassava, or sardines. I eat food from the ground, ground food. Yam and all. I don't eat the potato. I don't eat potato no, no, I don't eat by fruit. I find that I eat too much of that already. So, potato don't taste good to me, so I eat yam. Others, uh, any kind of others, especially in the soup. But it had to have pig tail in it. And soup. I, I don't drink heavy soup, you know. I drink more broth. But it had to put pig tail. I'm thankful to God because he's blessed me real good. <laughs> I believe the Lord take care of me. Because I remember when I was growing up like, like five and six years, I was sickly. And I had a fellow in a place called Mr. Matthew, a doctor. And she shamed the doctor with buddy because she carried a lot of food for him and things like that. And there was buddies and I, I go to him every Saturday. So when I get big now, that's done. And I never get sick again. Mr. Sisnet reminisced about the days when homemade herbal remedies were the only medicines available. I remember one time when we go to school, I come in the evening. I was suffering with a pain in my stomach. And my mother takes some so, so grass, a grass that is in a comb, you know. And boy, tea. And give me a straight down. That way, drink it, it tastes, it tastes, it tastes, the earth in it, it tastes, it does it. Yeah. Please, it's that all kind of thing. But, but it also, the bush people so good. Let me drink so glass tea. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think, how that feel from them to know? And the boy, and the boy goes cool. Older persons are a valuable resource. They are the repositories of traditions, culture, information, and talents, making them essential in maintaining intergenerational links. Moreover, they have given their labor to the creation of wealth now being enjoyed by all age groups. Many older persons continue to make vital contributions as workers, caregivers, volunteers and mentors, as well as through other activities. The elderly have earned or respect. Through national policy, they will continue to enjoy the right to equal opportunity as well as a high quality of life. You put this here, on the throat, how to go in there, and then put it over there, and they sleep in it. And that stop it from, from, from doing that, stop it. Um, a fella recently asked me how he get here so pretty, so, so wrong. I tell you what, it's in my trade. I, I can't tell you that. This, this is a thing for hernia. <clears throat> so so put, this in, put this in there. Let it boil. This had to pad up. And this the, the, go, go in the hole for here. Push in that. Put a belt around your hair. And then put two things on the so you have velcro. That's what honey. Women and men have it. And once it newly have this which help it, you won't have to go to, you won't have to go to the doctor. This will heal it. Yeah, sleep with it and everything.